Game out of reach. We got one ticket left to Boston. We'll find out who gets it. UConn or Duke, that regional final in Bridgeport. Up next, Mike Patrick and Dork Burst have the call. Great, thank you very much. And this is the arena at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The site for tonight's NCAA Women's Regional Championship presented by Orbitz. It will be the Huskies of Connecticut against the top seed, the Duke Blue Devils, for a trip to Boston. It's the only spot left to fill in the final four. And here's the way they'll line up. North Carolina will take on Maryland in the first national semifinal. The winner of this game will face LSU. It almost looks like the ACC tournament with the wild card being LSU. Mike Patrick, Doris Burke, Holly Rowe with you. Doris, what's your star watch? Well, the last time Barbara Turner was playing this well, Mike Patrick, it was two years ago, and Connecticut was about to win their third straight national title. She has her biggest test of the tournament with a quality front line from Duke. And Curry leads the most balanced Duke team in their history. She does it all, Mike, within the flow of the offense. They do not run a lot of sets for her. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both ball clubs. For the Huskies, Ann Strother is the leading scorer in a balanced offense. About 14 a game. They'll need her outside shot to win tonight. And Lindsey Harding will be a key for Duke, averaging almost five and a half assists a game in the NCAA tournament. Numbers that she must sustain. This telecast available tonight on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. Connecticut in white with a lot of support. This is virtually a home game for them. Or Duke in white, excuse me. Strother controls the opening tip for UConn. Duke opens man-to-man, -man and they don't switch screens initially. We will see that throughout the course of this game, however. Strother being dogged by that stingy man-to-man -man right now. And guess who? Barbara Turner, who is coming off the game of her life, gets the first bucket. Attack Allison Bales' feet, make her guard you. Bales with a miss. And the rebound goes to Mel Thomas, the sophomore from Cincinnati. Wilnette Crockett got the first bucket for Connecticut. And Crockett again, as they have obviously decided to target Bale. Yeah, there's no question. Wilnette Crockett has never been a scorer in her Connecticut career. Her best moments have come in the tournament, Mike, and they are going to play on that history right now. Crockett has already exceeded her average with four points. Misty Williams with the miss. Montgomery got such a great start in the semifinal. Hit a couple of big threes early. Crockett picked up her dribble this time. Well, Allison Bales is 6'7". She's five blocks away from tying the all-time NCAA tournament record. But when you test her feet laterally, obviously it's a challenge. And Will Nick Crockett on a spin move in either direction just beats her to the rim, gets a solid angle, and scores. Foul was on Curry, her first. Can't control the pass inside. Turnover, here comes Harding for Duke. Got a two-on-two, two, and here is Williams trailing the play. They get it inside. Juanisha Smith can't hit it. Well, these are nerves for Duke right now because they had a three-on-two, and they need to execute better in transition. Fifth straight year in the regional final for Gail Gaston for. She's been to one NCAA final, three final fours. And Gino Oriama, you want to know how dominant Connecticut has been since 2000. They are 33 and 2 in the NCAA tournament. 33 and 2. Well, they've got a 29-game win streak in the state of Connecticut on the line tonight. In the NCAA tournament, they have not lost in 29 tries in the nutmeg hmm. state. Strother gets that foul. Her first. And Juanita Smith from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, will go to the free throw line. Smith has been in a protracted shooting slump from the outside for Duke. She's made only one of her last 16 three-point shots. She was shooting nearly 50% from the floor before that streak. 
Yeah, you know what, Mike? And when you can come in with Abby Wainer, who got 14 points against Michigan State, that's some good relief to Smith, and it's a different look. Smith better off the bounce. Wainer better off the pull and the trigger from the perimeter. Wainer was huge in that game. Smith hits one free throw for the first Blue Devil point, and here's full court pressure. Connecticut likes this one four set. They at times run staggers off it. There's a stagger for Thomas. Nothing doing. Strother, too strong. Good offensive rebound by Crockett. And as she's falling down, kicks it back outside for a fresh 30. Nice drive, but she can't finish for Renee Montgomery, the 5'7 freshman. Smith quickly back for Duke. Harding gets the screen, works around it, tries a runner. Misty Williams has the rebound knocked out of her hand. I really believe Harding is important tonight. Her decision-making ability against a Connecticut team that will literally switch defenses mid-possession. You don't see a lot of teams do that. And here's a girl who had such a big influence the other night. Keisha Swanye is into the ballgame for UConn. Her speed and defensive quickness was very big against Michigan State. And there is Curry forcing one up, and it does draw a foul. Well, this is where Monique Curry, I think, does such a great job, getting herself to the free throw line. Curry averaging a career-low 27 minutes. She's been stellar throughout the NCAA tournament. It's amazing she generates all this offense without them running maybe top four or five steps for her specifically per game. And the reason her minutes are down, the reason everybody's minutes are down for Duke is they finally have depth. It is a very deep, very good basketball team. So Gail Gaston, of course, can afford to rotate a lot of players as opposed to last year when it was almost the Iron Five. Yeah, I agree, Mike. I think this team is even deeper than North Carolina in terms of quality depth all the way down the bench. Montgomery trying to work her way out of the trap and turns it over. And a poor pass to Smith, and she can't get the bunny on the other end. They'll have to reset the offense. Three out of the corner is short. Bales nearly kept it alive, but the rebound to Turner. Look at Swanye. Boy, does she get down to court in a heartbeat. And a great block by Bales. It comes back out to Strother. Inside to Crockett. And Crockett is fouled. We have seen Allison Bales be a force throughout this tournament. Gail Guestin course has done everything she can to encourage that level to continue. But Crockett is just flat out attacking, not intimidated at all by the five inches she's giving up. Crockett only 6-2. Started about half the games this year. And she is in there for her rebounding and defense. She has five points tonight. Keep in mind, this is a young lady who has not scored in double digits all season. And she's got five points in the first three and a half minutes of this game. It was a real struggle for her as a freshman to adjust to the level that Connecticut plays. Practice was a chore for Wilmette early in her career. Duke has not made a field goal in this game yet. Curry, nice pull-up move, didn't get the roll. Wow, look at Turner's guy for that four. She showed how much she can dominate yesterday. Swanye trying to make a tough, tough pass. Crockett couldn't catch it. Third turnover by Connecticut. Two by the young guards. You've got the rookie in Swanye, the second year, or the rookie in Montgomery, second year player in Swanye. Mike, they were very good against Georgia. They're going to have to be equally good against Duke, those two guards. Curry, another good head fake to get past Strother. And this rebound just snaps down by Turner. One and done for Duke. And four rebounds quickly for Turner. And there is the defensive presence of Bales. Smith, nice up and under move, but can't make the shot. 
she's out of control, Anisha Smith. Not good judgment early in this ball game. Don't be surprised to see her come out. Turner with a handoff. And Crockett gets the bucket. Seven points for Wilmette Crockett. Well, Barbara Turner is dominating the glass throughout the course of this tournament. 20 and 10, doing a heck of a job on both the offensive and defensive glass. 7-2 UConn. Harding with a runner and draws the foul. And this will be on Swanye, her first. The seniors from Connecticut took it personally. People question whether they can win a title. Well, Wilmette Crockett out to a solid start. Connecticut 5-5. Welcome to ESPN's A Week of Madness, presented by Harley Davidson. Welcome back to Bridgeport through the first 4.50 of this game. Connecticut dominating our first chance to check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, this is a home game of sorts for Connecticut, just over an hour from the campus in Stewart. We talked to the players about how it affect this game. For UConn, they are feeling the energy. There is a vibe in this building tonight, and they're feeding off that. 31-3 and three when they play in the NCAA tournament in their state of Connecticut. Now, Monique Curry of Duke says they can't worry about that. She said, I can't wait to silence that crowd. But, guys, they're going to have to shoot a lot better than 0% from the field to get it quiet in this building. Yeah, zero's bad, Holly, no matter how you look at it. The only points have come at the free throw line, and they've missed half of those. Well, we wondered, would they be tight? They've been to the regional finals five straight times. Well, they're wound like a spring right now. Green, number 32, in for the first time for UConn. Shante Black, number 11, and Abby Weiner, number 4, are in for Duke. And Turner, who was so brilliant last, or in the semifinals at the end of the game with a fadeaway three, shows she can hit another outside shot. She's a 27% long-range shooter. Well, she is capable from 15, 16 feet, however. You've got to contest if you're Duke. I think that was a communication breakdown. Harding open. They're still open. There's the first one. Shantae Black makes the first of 11 field goal tries. Well, she is a very live body, Shantae Black. Gets off her feet and vertical in a hurry. Green kicks it off, nearly thrown away. Green recovers and then travels. Fourth turnover against the Huskies. Well, Shardae Houston is a player who is an absolute mystery. She can be brilliant and maddening, and obviously this, this look right now is that that's maddening that she traveled that early. Sometimes when he goes to his bench, he's really not sure what's going to be coming off of there, isn't he? Yes, very true. Black, tough shot, fade away in and out. Strother, a good rebounder for a guard. Has her third of this game. Turner cuts the baseline. And Black was there waiting for it. Harding back the other way. Nice crossover. Throws up a player. Doesn't get it. And Turner with another rebound. Harding out of control on that dribble drive. Look at the speed of Swanye. Then tries to make another tough pass. And it's another turnover. If you want to know and understand why guard play is important, that last sequence will tell you why. Two point guards with over penetration lead to turnovers. Those kind of things pinch you in a regional final game. When you get in that deep at that speed, your alternatives are really limited. They really are. You have to go under control. It is nice when a point guard, Mike, is going full speed, gets to the free throw line, or pulls it to the side if you run side transition game. But relax. Let the floor fill. Let people come down their appropriate lanes. Curry will try one with range and hit it a three for Monique Curry, who shoots 42% from beyond the arc. That is the most improved part of Monique Perry's game, that long-distance ability. And all at once, Duke back within a point. Green goes baseline, lost it. Here comes Wainer. She's got great range. Oh. Bank it in! <laughs> Bank it's not supposed to be open this late. And a little self-effacing smile after she's off by about nine inches, and it goes anyway. They 
banking, nothing is getting hot. And when you bank in a three-pointer, that's about as hot as it gets. <laughs> and the Blue Devils up by two. They've scored the last eight points. And you know when that co coincided with? The entrance of Shante Black and Abby Wayner. Black has good energy about her. Well, as Gino Oriema went to the bench, and basically what he has gotten out of that is turnovers. What Duke got was big play. Well, and once Duke started to score, you can feel their energy level go up, and they have relaxed a bit. It's like they took that big, deep breath and said, okay, let's play. And Gino Oriema has Mel Thomas up in a hurry, and Turner will get a breather on the bench here. <laughs> Brittany Hunter, the former Duke player, is on. And here's a charge called on Harding. Let's check in with Holly. Went nuts in the huddle. Against Georgia, he said their only game plan going in was no three-pointers. They gave up three quick threes to start that game. Again tonight, he has zero toleration for them giving up those perimeter shots. He called the timeout after that three-point play, got after Ann Strother in the huddle. He, he said, in language I can't repeat, that has got to stop. All right, thanks very much, Holly. And you could tell that Gino was really on fire. <laughs> Wayner, nice no-look pass in the basket. Black scores off the feed by Wayner. And Doris, back to your point, those two have made a huge difference. Yeah, there was a great presence about those two young players. Wayner, a freshman, Black, a sophomore. Great job by Bales to cover some ground. Bales and Black in there together. She got the 6-7 frame out long enough to make the block. Wayner goes down. That was a poor possession by her. Just lost control and dribbled into a double team. UConn has not had good sets offensively. Let's see what they do here. Trying to get a little screen outside. Shot clock is at 10. Montgomery needed to get her own shot, couldn't do it. Shot clock is down to four. Strother, very tough for her to get her own shot. She has to fire it up off the glass. But the rebound goes to UConn. That's frustrating as a head coach because they just played 30 seconds of stellar defense and didn't finish the job. Long rebounds are tough. Sometimes when you shoot those threes, that's what you get. Boy, Duke really playing withering defense right now. Strother hits the jump shot for her first bucket. I do exactly the same thing. Connecticut is a team that has shown some cracks when they are under duress. But good ball screen out top. Strother, the senior, calmly sticks it. Curry. And they will call Curry with the offensive foul, her second. Now let's go to Trey Wingo, a Sports Center 30 of 30 update. The regional championship from Bridgeport brought to you by Orbitz, and it is a two point game here. Doris, the last foul call was huge because it was two on Monique Curry. Yeah, and I think how this remaining 10 minutes plays out, but I really thought this was a block on Wilnette Crockett. Watch Monique Curry go strong to the bucket. I did not believe Curry was committed an offensive foul. Crockett, number one, didn't look set, and she all, and oh, no, you don't have to be set, but she also didn't have great position. Right. Turner got it. Bales couldn't stop her that time. Bales with four block shots and five rebounds in this game. Connecticut handles the pressure out front. Obviously, they want to go right inside after beating that initial pressure. Misty Williams back in the game. They try to work her one-on-one -on -one inside. Wayner with a nice cut to the bucket. And you used the perfect word, I thought, Doris, energy that she brought off the bench. Well, she knows she is faster than Mel Thomas. Just dives right to the rim, and that's a tough shot. She made it look easy. Highly recruited out of high school. National Player of the Year in just about every poll taken. Gatorade and McDonald's both, both things are number one. Williams trying to work one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, great feed inside. Duke is working the ball so well now. Bale scores off the good pass from Jessica Foley. Not bad when you can come off the bench with Jessica Foley's size, her shooting and passing ability, and all her experience as a starter last season. Long, long three 
from Renee Montgomery. Her shots like that the other night were a big key to the spark. Her, her shots against Georgia saved Connecticut. They were in desperation mode against Georgia, and she drains three first-half threes, and look at Duke all of a sudden starting to heat up. Great ball movement. Make the passing it, has been crisp. Make it seven of nine now for Duke. Solid inside game. Lots of good quality post players and different bodies. Six, seven bales. Black, six, four, and athletic. Misty Williams a little smaller, but the banger. The last three possessions, their spacing has been great. Turner goes baseline into a double team. Bale's just standing her ground. Very smart. <laughs> Mismatch here physically fails over Turner. Misty Williams offensive rebound. The bucket and the foul. Well, Duke has absolutely dominated the glass throughout the first three rounds of the NCAA tournament, and they are taking advantage of their size in this particular game, working the offensive glass. Allison Bales race around the rim. Misty Williams, the banger, gets it done. Going to go scoreless, but they have certainly fought back and now making an overwhelming majority of their shots as the intensity picked up. There's no question of the fact that they have had seven different players score. You had Shante Black and Wainer come in. The momentum of this game changed on the entry point of those two players. Misty Williams, whose father, Chubby Checker, sang the national anthem at senior night. And Duke now has its biggest lead at 22-16. They are the number one seed, Connecticut number two. And they make a change defensively, they go into a zone. But watch all the pointing and talking. Turner at the baseline, and she'll step out and take another bomb. Just inside the three-point line on both of those, but she showed her range and was successful. Smith for three. No. Offensive rebound, Black got it and was fouled. Well, Barbara Turner simply does not want to finish her career yet at Connecticut. She's going to fade outside a little bit. Jess Foley is not going to contest enough after she takes that back off dribble. And Barbara pulls the trigger. She's healthy, and that's why she's playing well. Two fouls on Wilmette Crockett. Black sandwich moves into the lane, forced it up. And it's out to UConn. Very long, very... Check it out to Duke. Yeah, very good athlete. <laughs> the body's starting to fly now as Foley knocks Crockett to the floor. No call. And Gino Oriana really upset. I think he's got a... Got a good argument on this one. The weak side blast has been trouble for Connecticut. Foley off the inbound. Misses the jumper. Crockett gets this one. And there's a foul. Mike, that's two bad shots in a row by Duke. You had Juanisha Smith, who, as you noted already, has struggled from three. She took an early three. That was an early three off a reset yep. on the inbound. Why? You have the lead. You're on the road. Quality possessions are important. Work the shot clock a little bit. You'll get that three eventually. The foul was on Misty Williams. Lindsey Harding back in for the Blue Devils, who are up four. Knocked away. Crockett trying to pass against that zone on the run. Wainer kicks it out to Foley. Rims out on that one. Wainer kept it alive. Williams with a rebound. Knocked away from her and stolen by UConn. That was another quick three. 24 on the shot clock. There's a three from Montgomery. Offensive rebound, UConn. Wainer almost gets another steal. Turner this time from three. No. And Black with a rebound. Both teams rushing in a little bit, Doris. Yes, no question. Barbara Turner feeling it, though, Mike. And she wants to shoot it every time she touches it. 
Black into the lane. Short. And Black called for an offensive foul trying to get the rebound. That's a function of youth right there. She knows she missed a chippy. There was a double from Connecticut. She needed one more power dribble and attack the rim off both feet. Rocket will get a rest with 5.55 to go in the half. And Charday Houston back in. And Houston has been one of those mystery players. What are you going to get when she comes on the court? You're going to get three quick buckets? Well, he always, he always substitutes her when they're on the offensive end of the floor, you notice. Yep. Here she is on the wing. Cross-court pass knocked away. Twelve on the shot clock, so you've got to get into this thing pretty quick. One and done. Very little offensive rebounding. Harding looking for Bales. Black handling the ball outside, so they have the two big post players in there still together. Now Black double team lost it. Shot clock at five. Can be up to Harding. She gets off her shot, but can't hit it. Here comes Swanye with all that speed. Four on two. Nice move by Swanye. Great passing in the way into green. See what happens, Mike, when a point guard stops at the free throw line and allows players to fill lanes. Swanye was under control in that possession. The sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. She was the key in that win over Georgia Black with the miss. What a foul. The only time Keisha Swanye gets in trouble is when she over-penetrates. Her handle and speed are unquestioned. Her decision-making at times, the pull-up, the jump stop, the extra pass to the weak side of the floor, that's pretty transition basketball. Black to go to the free throw line. Brittany Hunter into the basketball game. Now remember, she can only play about 10 to 15 minutes max. That multiple knee injury situation impacts how long she can be on the floor. That's a travel, no question. Good call, Dennis DeMeo. She was anxious to get into that move and picked them both up. Twenty-four twenty, Duke over UConn with four twenty-one and counting. I Saved in the corner, but out of bounds. I simply, and now Bonita Spence is going to have a conversation, and this is great officiating. It's about getting it right, and Bonita had the better angle, and they go the other direction. Great piece of officiating. Yes, it was. Again, the weak side board, and again, I'm going to just make this point. Ooh, that's close. That's a tough one to make, but Bonita obviously felt strongly. But still, Mike, that was another quick three. Duke has missed its last eight shots. And that's about nothing but shot selection right now. 24-20. Montgomery can't hit. Another offensive rebound here for UConn. Taken away and ahead to Harding. Harding can't convert. It was her former teammate, Brittany Hunter, back on defense. Here comes Swanye, 16 short. Montgomery wide open. She kicks it out to down. Barbara Turner scoring from the outside. Two nights ago, she was so strong inside until the final second. Rick Patino said the best time to shoot a three is off an offensive rebound. That was a case in point. And the UConn fans are on their feet, and Allison Bales will make them sit down. 
Here comes Swanye again. Tries to kick it out to the corner. Strother back inside. Excellent ball movement by UConn. And the three by Montgomery just ticks the rim on the way by. You'll take those kind of shots. Four passes, one into the post, a reversal of the basketball, and an uncontested shot. Duke started ice cold. They are ice cold again in between. They made 8 of 11, and Bales wheels into the lane to score. Good job by Bales to be patient in there. There was some pressure. She got herself gathered. Her feet are better than they look. Bales has a half dozen with 28-23 as we wind down the first half. Hunter got caught up in the air, threw the ball away. Black takes it for the Blue Devils. Brittany Hunter is too anxious right now. Those are two rush plays in the post. The travel a couple of possessions ago and that poor pass. And Hunter has to get out on Bales, who has already shown her ability to shoot from that range. Swanye just nice through everybody. Kicks it out into the corner. Montgomery, this time she's going to six points for Montgomery, and it's a two-point contest. Well, you know what? This is what Georgia did. They allowed Swanye to go uncontested all the way up the floor. I think you need to stop her at the mid-court line, Mike, because if you give her that head of steam, if she makes good decisions, good things are going to happen for Connecticut. She makes defenses look bad, especially when she gets it to the right people. In this case, it's Montgomery who knocks down a three. And again, it's off the free throw line pull up. A simple jump stop after pushing the pace, getting Duke on their heels defensively. The shooters stay spread and they get a nice looking shot. Check in with Holly. Well, Renee Montgomery is no stranger to Duke coach Gail Gessencourt. Gail was the coach of the world under 19 team for Team USA this year. And Renee Montgomery tried out for that team before she'd even gone to college to play basketball. Coach Gail Gessencourt said she was so impressed with Montgomery. It was difficult not to pick her for that team, but they thought she needed another year or a year of college under her belt before she was on a world championship level team. Gail said she was the only player that came to that camp who was a leader. Now think about that. She was just 18 years old, just out of high school, and with all those stars, she was the leader of that camp. Del Gesson, of course, admires her very much. And they are just delighted to have her, a 5'7 freshman from St. Albans, West Virginia. The lead is two. Shot clock. Down to seven seconds now for Harding. She tries to get it into Williams. It'll be up to Harding now with one on it. Leans into it as it knocks away. Misty Williams tried to get it up in time, but it's a shot clock violation with 1.22 left in the half. It'll be UConn ball. Maryland, an ACC rematch in the first national semifinal. And then LSU, another number one seed, will face either number one Duke or number two Connecticut in the other national semifinal. The final four games start Sunday night, 7 o'clock, ESPN HD. I hope everybody will join us for that. Should be great. The lone blemish on Carolina's record came at the hands of Maryland, but the shot that got it into overtime by Ashley Newman, I thought she traveled before she made it. Maryland went on to win it in the overtime session. This one's knocked out of bounds on a possession that could have tied the game. The 11th turnover for the Huskies in his first half. Yeah, you know, Keisha Swanee, look at this. This is what he has dealt with all season long. She was not under great duress. There was a trap coming, but they panic at times when things come at them. Harding directing traffic, trying to spread the big players down in the post. Nice pass. Mr. Williams can't hit the shot. But Bales found her. Coming up on the halftime report, Trey Wingo, Carol Lawson, and Stacy Dale Schumann will be along. And they'll take a look at the heels over the volunteers. Sampson goes to Indiana, and Jeff Gordon find big time at NASCAR. The last foul was three on Ann Strother. UConn elected to go with a double team, and Strother was a little bit slow on the rotation. She got herself behind Misty Williams, and that's where she got herself in trouble. Now they're going to get her out of here. Make sure she doesn't pick up a silly fourth foul with under a minute to go in the first half. And Misty Williams back at the free throw line, where she's only a 66% shot. She got the second. 
Here's their half-court trap. A little 1-3-1 look. They want to get you right over the timeline. There it is. Turner. Williams with a rebound. Got an 11-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Wainer, two games in a row, has made a difference. Great pass to Bale. She missed the shot, but then got it back and draws the foul. Allison Bale, though she missed that chippy, has been a force on both sides of the ball through the first 20 minutes. She's blocked some shots. She's posted up strong. When she plays well, their chances of a national title skyrocket. She has been the equivalent of Barbara Turner in what she's done in the tournament because her averages have nearly doubled in a couple of different departments. Her scoring, her assists. She's an outstanding passer we saw in the semifinals. She passed so well from the top of the key when they put her at the high post, and she is only one behind Ruth Riley for the most blocks in NCAA tournament history. She is already the best that ever played at Duke. She has eight tonight, two assists, six rebounds. What a game. Here's the tie-up, and the possession arrow will give it to the Blue Devils. This is a simple trap. This is a simple 1-3-1 one, one trap. And you know, as the ball handler, that is the exact place they want to trap you. So make your decision early. Either invite the trap and reverse it as it comes at you, or split it with the dribble. But be assertive one way or the other. UConn has made such a nice comeback. It's got to be very disappointing in the last two minutes of this half to do this. Can she get off the shot in time? She does, but it doesn't go for Harding. Duke off to a very, very slow start, but they come back to lead it here at the half. 31 to 26. They did a nice job taking advantage of their size. Wayner and Black gave them the initial push. Bales has been solid through the first 20. Let's check in with Holly. Coach, in that 15-minute timeout, you guys hadn't scored from the field yet. What was going through your mind? I just thought we looked tight. I mean, we were rushing everything. Uh, we were getting some good looks, but everything we were pressing. I just told them to take a deep breath, relax. We were fine, play ball. How did they change that? Well, I thought we picked up defensively, did a better job, and we just showed a little bit more patience on the offensive end of the floor. All right, thanks, Coach. 31-27 right. at the half. The nation's top-scoring team held to 31, but they still lead by four. Now let's send it to Trey Wingo with our halftime report. All right, Mike and Doris, thank you very much. Welcome into the halftime show. Trey Wingo here with Carol Lawson, Stacey Dale Schumann. That's the trophy they're playing for. Only one of these teams will get a chance to play for it this weekend in the Final Four. We'll get you up to date on what happened in the earlier game in just a little bit. And in part by Harley-Davidson Motorcycles. It's time to ride. At the half, it's Duke by 5, 31-26. They got up to such a horrible start that have come back to play very, very well in the latter stages of the first half. Mike Patrick, Doris Burke, Holly Rowe is also with us. How about Allison Bales? She may be working on a triple-double tonight. When she plays for a 6-7 side, she not only changes the complexion of her Duke basketball team, but the complexion of basketball games. She was a force to be reckoned with on both sides of the ball. How about Duke shoots 29%? But because Connecticut has 12 turnovers, they get 11 more field goal attempts, or excuse me, 11 more free throw attempts, six more field goal attempts. That's why Duke has the advantage right now. And Duke also with an edge from the free throw line. Turner off the glass. Barbara Turner, the first player into double figures. She has 11. Williams left all alone, so she'll take it from 16, but she travels first. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, catching up with Gino Ariema at halftime, he said he was actually pretty pleased with how they played defense in the first half. Consider Duke is the top scoring team in the country, and they held them to 31 points and 28% from the field. He said their problems lie on offense. Nobody has been consistent. Also, as you said, Doris, he pointed out the turnovers, but they've just got to be smarter on offense. Rocket trying to put a little pressure on Bales, who gets her fifth block of the ballgame. Williams forced that one up a little bit against some pretty solid defense. Turner with another rebound. Not 
much penetration from UConn. Too much dribbling. Look at where you are with 10 on the shot clock. Turner, nice crossover, but Misty Williams still right there grilling. She made it anyway. Well, the best one-on-one -on -one player for Connecticut from the post position, obviously, is Barbara Turner. She can do that back to the basket or facing up, and we've seen that throughout the first three games and now the fourth game of the NCAA tournament. And Misty Williams, pretty athletic and has a nice height advantage. But she couldn't stop her, and then she can't score at the other end. UConn trying to take the lead. Blocking foul called on Harding as Renee Montgomery drove. First half stats. You can see neither team able to get in a flow on the offensive end of the floor. Duke dominating with their size. That's why they had the free throw advantage and six blocks. Non-shooting foul. So they inbound. Turner kicks it outside. The jump shot by Mel Thomas. We haven't called her name very much in a couple of nights, but that's a big one because UConn takes the lead. All generated off Barbara Turner and wise with Gail Gesson Forrest. Caught, look at her, and she is hot with Misty Williams. Well, Barbara Turner is capable of creating offense for herself and others. Look at this. In the face of a shot clock coming down, she goes one-on-one, -on -one, takes Misty Williams. Little separation. She has been so good. Fifteen minutes to play. Well, Gail Gaston, of course, was anything but calm as her players came off the floor and she called that timeout. She was in the face of Misty Williams, but after this scene, she was able to calm down in the huddle. She just looked at her senior, Misty, tapped her on the leg, and very sincerely looked at her and said, Misty, I know you can do better. Misty shook her head and said, yes. We noticed today in the shoot-around, Misty Williams is the one player on this team who is so wound up. She's a senior. She thinks this is her last chance for a national title. She's just got to calm down, Doris. Well, it's interesting. She's been such a hard worker. That's black. Turner with a follow, draws the foul. Good job by Connecticut to attack. But back to Holly's point, Gail Gesson, of course, this is her new persona, folks. She has tried to take a more relaxed countenance. Now, she was anything but relaxed in every play. Holly took out a break. But her reaction is important tonight. Connecticut is a team that can draw strength and confidence from their coach. He's a five-time national champion. Gail Gestenkors is somebody that her team will look to for strength. And she's got to be able to deliver it, and I think she will. Barbara Turner in the NCAA tournament is averaging 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.2 assists. Mm. Averaging against Michigan State, she had 31, which is a career high, and nine boards, and of course the shot that won it. What a great region in this steal by Montgomery. Took it away from Harding. UConn hitting on all cylinders now. Now Smith did not have a good half. Bales, offensive foul. Three on Allison Bales. So Connecticut testing their character a bit. This is a home game essentially for Connecticut. Watch Montgomery, a very good athlete, just gets a clean pick. Wise of Harding to let it go. A lot of times, whether that's clean or not, they call you for it when you reach across the other player's body. But obviously, she got a great steal there and Bales with another block, her sixth of the night. And I don't think they should ignore Bales on the offensive end of the floor. She had eight first half points. And Allison Bales has now blocked more shots than any other player in the history of the NCAA tournament. Tough shot by Juanita Smith. Back and forth and back and forth. This is like the second half of both games we had the other night. The intensity just doubles. Montgomery is, in Gino Oriama's words, as talented a freshman guard as he has had and the best shooter. That's high praise. Harding with a runner. 
But given that Smith and Harding were a combined 0 for 10, if you're Gail Gester scores, you're pleased that they got off to a better start here in the second half. And for Harding, that's only three points. She averages nearly 11. She's nearly 11. And now the defensive intensity picking up for Duke. What a smart play by Mel Thomas. She just looked over shoulder nothing was blocking her path to the basket yeah that's poor defense by Monique Curry she thought she had her in jail gave up on the play back the other way Smith with a miss and a foul underneath I'm not sure why Renisha Smith her shot selection judgment throughout the first 25 minutes of this game has not been good and look at Gail guess course Gail grabs Renisha Smith and lets her know it and that foul against UConn, trying for the rebound. And Connecticut has the lead because they started the second half on a 9-0 run. Barbara Turner with another outstanding performance. Duke shooting only 28% from the floor. And Monique Curry, their leading scorer and their third all-time leading scorer, only has five shots, Doris, and four points. Really, the backcourt for Duke has not been good. Smith and Harding have not shot it well, as has not Monique Curry. I mean, let's see if she gets started here. They've got Abby Weiner in the ballgame. Curry forced that one, got the rebound, put it back up. The rebound is gone to Black, who was very effective in the first half. Wainer gets the loose ball. Curry outside the arc. Lost it. Williams got it back. Duke's been very fortunate on this possession so far. Black with a miss. Duke basketball, but it's out of bounds to UConn. Let's go to Holly. In the Duke huddle, Gail Gesson first looked at her players and said, we've fallen apart, but what we can do when we have fallen apart is come back together. This second half has to be about team basketball. She feels like too many individuals are just taking jump shots, not running the offense. She also pointed out how bad they've been on the rebound. She said Barbara Turner is out-rebounding all of us, and she's right. Turner has 11 boards. Even Bales at 6'7", only has 7. We've got to do a better job there, according to Gail Gesson, course. And Holly, she was absolutely right in that about Evaluation. Here comes Harding back the other way. Another turnover. Both teams getting rather sloppy with it. Williams trying to establish that high-low post look again. Oh, great pass. Block missed the shot. And there's a block by Turner on the follow by Williams. And Allison Bales is going to get back in this game after a very brief rest. Well, Connecticut doing a pretty good job of challenging shots. They are outsized in there. There's lots of Duke bodies, but they are aggressive and they are not backing down. They're being very physical. Gail Gestapo has anticipated that. There's Bales as Misty Williams will get a breather. Duke only 2 of 13 in the second half. Two of 13. Of course, that's actually better than the way they started the game. They were 0 for 10 to start this contest. Here's the way the final four is shaping up. North Carolina and Maryland will meet in one semifinal. LSU awaits the winner of this one. It will be in Boston next weekend. Curry trying to draw the foul. Did so against Strother. And that will be four on Ann Strother, the leading scorer for UConn and their best three-point shooter. Well, she has not played well, but nonetheless, Kalena Green will replace her, and that is a lot of experience heading to the bench. It's somebody who has performed well in big moments for Connecticut historically. Plus, Strother has been a very, very good rebounder for this ball club up here in the regionals, and they're certainly not going to get that from Green at 5'10". Well, this is Duke's first free throw of the second half. Curry is now doing what she does best. She's not shot it well. She's gotten herself to the free throw line a couple of trips. Missed them both. Misty Williams with the offensive rebound. Knocked out of her hands again out to Duke. UConn just can't get the ball away from the Blue Devils. Mm -hmm. Five straight trips to the regional finals for Duke. They've lost two straight. Can they break through here? 
Curry drives again in the lane. Good ball movement by Wainer to Harding. She misses again. Curry saves it. Bounces it off Harding's chin. And a fresh 30 for Duke. Wow, that was a rough shot by Harding as well. Williams. Wainer, nice hit. Or Bales, nice head fake. Guess what? Another offensive rebound. And they finally lose it. How long did they have it? About two and a half minutes and didn't score. And Mr. Williams looks like she's hurt. She went down hard, diving for the ball, trying to save it. In obvious discomfort as she gets up. Well, Connecticut has not done a good job on the offensive glass. It clearly hits her foot. She tries to make the save and pays the price. Duke has had 19 offensive rebounds in this game. 19. Mm. Hey, that's a remarkable number. Well, they did not take advantage. They had Connecticut commit 12 turnovers. Did take advantage of that. 19 offensive rebounds, but how many second chance points off of those? Well, it seems like they had 19 offensive rebounds in that sequence. And now they have eight. So you really could have generated more points off of those second chance. 19, and you only have nine points. UConn with the ball and a four-point lead. A runner at the baseline by Montgomery is no good. She hustled all the way into the other corner, and UConn comes up with it. Good play by Green. Shot clock did not recycle because they didn't hit the rim. Green missed the rim again. And they just got this one off, although it missed by Shania, or, uh, Swanye. Kalena Green, for the first half and second, has been a bit skittish in her limited time on the floor. She's got to calm down. Curry bricks one. Knocked out of bounds by Duke. Out of bounds to UConn. Let's go to Trey Wingo. Sports Center, 30 and 30. All right, Mike. Hey, Trey, thanks very much. 12.50 to go in the ball game. And Duke, with poor shooting here in the second half, has not been able to cut into what is now a four-point UConn lead. They have shot only two out of 16 from the floor. They're lucky they're not down a lot more than four. And there's no question. Connecticut's inability to take advantage with their offense. Harding back in there to run the club from the point. Bales' little fadeaway. That was partially blocked. Good defense that time by Houston. Nice crossover dribble and a reverse by Montgomery. Oh, oh five, my. Seven. She goes right in the middle. Goodness, how pretty is that? That kid is so mentally tough. And you can see why he says she's one of the most talented freshman guards he's ever had. The Big East Freshman of the Year at 13 against Michigan State. Gets a huge bucket there. How does Duke respond? Wainer. Yes, sir. This is a young lady who is so talented, and I love her presence, her countenance on the floor. She holds herself like a player. One of those people that wants the ball in big-time situations and then can do something with it. Houston with a drive and blows the layup. Jarday Houston with a nice drive. She forgot to finish. She has not been good, Mike, and she is so gifted offensively. Wow. Harding tries a tough, tough bounce pass. It kicked out of bounds. Timeout with 11.29 left in the game, door. Well, in a regional final, you expect your seniors to step up, but Renee Montgomery for the Connecticut Huskies in traffic, 5, 6, 7, finishes. Yes, man, we see you, Renee. And how about Abby Wainer, the long ball, getting Duke right back in this thing. Pretty stuff. Elite Eight round, and it was Simone Augusta stepping up and taking the charge that sealed the way for the Tigers' third straight trip to the Final Four. For this, Pontiac will present $5,000 to the General Scholarship Fund at LSU. Simone Augusta stepping up and doing it defensively, the Pontiac game-changing performance of the Elite Eight round. Let's send it back to Mike Patrick and Doris Burke. All right, thanks, Graham. What was amazing about that, Simone Augusta said after that play, she thought it was the first charge she had ever taken. I don't know that that speaks well to a defense over the years. <laughs> but it's impeccable timing. 
Yet another offensive board for Duke. Duke could use some timely shooting right now. Black. Offensive foul call on Shante Black, no basket. Now, Duke's season low for field goal percentage is 33. They have shot it at a 25% clip, and Connecticut has got a good scouting report done. Clearly a charge. She threw that right shoulder into Barbara Turner. Good call. Connecticut outsized, but they're not out quick on the blocks, and that's where their advantage has been tonight. Shooting 25%, they're down three. How's that possible? Mm. Get all those rebounds, that's why. I don't think you can play Sharda Houston anymore, and I think, you know, you've given her an awful lot of chances. So you, we, we, between Gino and I, we've got five national titles, but I'm confused <laughs> as to why she's on the floor, because she hasn't given them anything. No, and she's had good looks inside and shot air ball. Black and Bales tried to cut toward the hoop, and now Black will take one in the lane with a miss, and Allison Bales into the corner with a rebound, and she's fouled. And that's going to be on Houston. And Gino Oriyama, as Bales goes down, is going to get Houston out of the ballgame. And Bales goes down hard. That wasn't much of a shove. It's more like she lost her balance. It was. Eight points, nine rebounds, six blocked shots for Allison Bales. Throwing a couple of assists. And she's got MVP written all over mm -hmm. her. And right now, she is in a lot of pain. Foley checks in for her. You just have a feeling that this is the girl who's going to make a difference in this game. Knocked away, knocked out of bounds, out to Duke. Boy, how confidently is Abby Wainer getting off those screens and releasing her jump shot? And Swanye, to her credit, is doing a pretty good job defensively. Wainer just has that look in her eye. Yes. That's why. Yeah, she, I mean, the way she's held herself in two games here in Bridgeport has been outstanding. She was the National High School Player of the Year, and Strother was the player she idolized since she was in the fifth grade. Both grew up in Colorado. Swanye kicks it out. And they're going to call Misty Williams for a foul. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Mike, you're talking about that look in Abby Wainer's eye. What's funny is today at the shoot-around, Monique Curry was shooting with Abby Wainer, and she'd make her stay out on the perimeter and take shots until she had what Monique was calling that look in her eye. She'd say, wait, I don't see it. I don't see it. And Abby would miss the shot. Finally, she said, all right, I see it. And Abby would make the shot. So even the players know when Abby has that look in her eye, she's deadly. Well, she's got it now. Curry had the shot blocked from behind, and they'll call a foul green boy that looked like she got all ball well they're gonna say she got her with the body this is what Monique does and this is what good offensive oh. players do they get to the free throw line she realized who she had guarding her a lot of ball there was some contact with the hips you're being kind yes we're tied at 41 as Curry will go to the line. She is an 82.8% free throw shooter. What a brilliant career she has had at Duke coming out of Washington, D.C. Fifth year senior, number three in scoring, four in rebounding, seven in assists. She has five tonight, makes it six, and Duke has reclaimed the lead. Now, this looks like it's the 1-3-1 one, one trap that gave Connecticut problems in the first half. It is, and Swanye with a very tentative pass to Montgomery. And now they fall back into this zone. Everybody's pointing, making sure they know where shooters are. Swanye, it's what you want, the penetration on the zone. Crockett had it blocked halfway up. Tried to get it up on the glass, and here comes Curry. And that's going to be a foul, and she was double teamed. It's going to be on Swanye. That will be three on her. 
Well, you see Monique Curry thinks about going and attacking glass. Ooh. Wow. Boy, that's two in a row that looked like pretty good defensive play. Because there's no contact from, from Chardet Houston. No. And that's a tie-up. Well, those are tough calls against UConn. Great for Duke. And then Curry takes advantage the leads up to three. Yeah, so they take advantage of that uh, opportunistic situation. And Tino Oriama taking this chance to get an official's ear. UConn in a real drought at the wrong time of the game. Yeah, they have experienced these pro long droughts throughout the course of the season. Houston, no. Nothing is going right for her. You just don't have any options. I think he's thinking, you know, Orion was probably too early to come back with Ann, though underneath the eight-minute timeout, I think you see Ann Struther come back in this thing. And maybe a little bit before, because here she comes. Well, Houston has not scored in this ballgame. Makes it very difficult to keep her out there. Strother with the four fouls is back in. Swanye will sit down. No need to wait because you want Ann on the offensive end. She hasn't taken many shots, but she's still capable of stretching a defense. So before the timeout, you get her in because you're going to have a look on the offensive end. That was a good substitution. And Mel Thomas, another good outside shooter, is back in. So running the club is totally up to Montgomery. Rocket. Black can just afford to back away from her. She's not going to shoot it. Here is Strother. It's tough for her to create something on her own when she can't hit the shot. Wainer, not this time. Strother battling Misty Williams, and Misty Williams will be called for her third foul. Timeout on the court, only 7.34 to go. It's a three-point game for the right to go to the championship. CAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by Pontiac. Vote for this round's Pontiac game-changing performance at NCAASports.com slash Pontiac. The emotions rising here in Bridgeport, Connecticut as these teams fight for the last spot in the Final Four. Allison Bales, injured a couple of minutes ago, has not come back into the ballgame yet. That would be big for Duke, but they have dominated the glass when she's been in there, when she's been on the bench. They're just killing UConn on the board. 48 to 30 on the glass, 24 of them pass on the offensive end. And you know what? They haven't necessarily used those to get points, but what it does is gives you much more time of possession and field goal opportunities. Strother, and only nine on the shot clock, and a wide open shot for Mel Thomas. She's too good a shooter to leave from that range. Nice job to give it and get it back. Wainer to Curry as they run a weave outside with the three guards. Wainer walks. Well, they were running that weave, and Connecticut defended it well. This is Ann Strother, the nice kick out off the double team. And as you said, Thomas, just such pretty form. A lot of kids out there for UConn who have trouble getting their own shots. They need screens or they need an up-tempo in order to get good looks. They're 2 of 13. A lot of that has to do with the kind of defense Duke is playing. Montgomery, shot clock under 10 again. Strother goes baseline with a runner. Offensive rebound to Crockett. UConn back on top. Now that is created because of Strother's ability to get off the bounce. Her defender, Crockett's defender, has got to go challenge. That was Shante Black. Weak side board is wide open. Nine points for Wilnette Crockett. She has not had a double-figure scoring game all year long. Well, Shante Black makes a good challenge. Misty Williams gets beat. Shante, the great athletic attempt to block it, but that's what's exposed on the opposite side. One of those guards have got to drop down and find a body and check out. They did not, so Crockett gets her ninth point. And her third personal foul on the next possession. 
And Williams will go to the line on the one and one. Not a good free throw shoot. Missed the front end. Boy, Foley nearly came up with another one. Isn't she? Turner had a shot, passed on it. You get the idea if Turner gets a shot, she might as well go ahead and take it. She's the one person out there who is going to be able to get her own shot. Nice backdoor cut by Parker. She gets the basket off the pass from Montgomery and draws the foul as well. When you stay spaced, and as much as Duke is pressuring, the backdoor cut will be open. Duke has done a stellar job, but watch this cut right here. It's a little back screen by Strother and a greatly executed play. That's just pretty stuff. And Crockett, well, Gino joked earlier in the year, he said, we might as well just send Will Net on to Boston because she <laughs> plays her best basketball in March. The first double-digit scoring game of the season for Wilnet Crockett. She has 11. The lead is three. What a night for her. And four fouls on Misty Williams. Let's see where Duke goes offensively. Bales back in the ball game. Harding, nice cut down the lane. Blocking foul. That looked like a good call. I think it was. And again, Tyna Napier and Dennis DeMeo, what they did was they made eye contact. I'm not sure that, that Tyna was clear on what this was. This is an excellent call, not a good call, excellent. A nice job of communication. Unspoken communication between Dennis and Tyna, but communication nonetheless. Harding at the line, 78% free throw shooter. Only 5.24 to go in this ballgame. I don't think I'd be surprised to see Duke maybe extend a little bit or maybe that 1-3-1 half-court trap that gave Connecticut fits in that first half. Certainly that would put a lot of pressure on Montgomery because she is the ball handler and the only one out there. Yeah, and this is the 1-3-1 trap. Right down the lane, wasn't challenged until the end, but Bales knows what she can do defensively. She doesn't have to hurry with that side. No, and I'd let her get a touch. Why not enter it into the post here? Hurry. Tough shot. Wow. She made it. That is a very tough shot. And a fifth-year senior, nice job to complete it. Monique Curry has tied this game at 48. Knocked out of bounds. Now they answer the ball into the post and watch Monique Curry. Barbara Turner gives her a bit of a cushion but uses everything she's got in the arsenal. Spins. That's pretty stuff. Shot clock at 12. Connecticut has had a lot of trouble getting a good shot early. But Turner with a great drive from the baseline grabs her knee. I think she hurt herself. Well, you made the point a moment ago, and it was appropriate. She is the player most likely to be able to create her own shot. And with the shot clock under 10, wise decision. Turner has 16. Foley. Here's Bale. Into the lane. Got it. I think she can challenge Wilnette Crockett, especially if they're not going to come with a double. She has got a double-double. Every possession becomes so important now. Montgomery's done a nice job being in there by herself, not having Swanye in the backcourt as a running mate. Yeah. 
You know, Barbara Turner has been stellar throughout the course of the NCAA tournament. She saved them in the regional semifinal against Georgia. Their best one-on-one -on -one option should the shot clock get under 10. At six foot seven, Allison Bales has been all of that. With 3.42 left to play, but what's tied up right now are the calves of Barbara Turner. She is a critical senior performing in clutch moments, but right now the trainer for UConn, Rosemary Ragel, furiously icing the back of both of her calves. She is cramping, but she's going to go back out on the court. She took at least four sodium tablets, or what appeared to be sodium tablets. They're going to try to keep her on the court as long as she can, and knowing this young lady, a few cramps aren't going to keep her out of this last 3.42. But boy, when they hit, they hit. There's nothing you can do. You're just, you're done. And Strother having trouble getting it in has to call a timeout. 3.41 to go. 11 on this shot clock. It'll be interesting to see what UConn can do when they get the ball back in because they have not had much success getting anything off outside of 10 seconds anyway. Here's our tournament summary. Maryland will be going to a third Final Four ever, but it's first since Chris Weller took them in 1989. Third straight Final Four for LSU. And Pokey Chapman did another great job. The second Final Four in school history for North Carolina. They won it all back in 94. And who else? Doris, who's it going to be, Duke or UConn? Yeah, it should be interesting to see as we go down the stretch. It's amazing that Duke is knotted up at 50 with Connecticut when they have shot only 28%. They've got six more field goal attempts, nine more free throws. Barbara Turner's presence on the floor is important in particular right now because, as you said, the shot clock is at 11. She is their best option, along with Montgomery, for going off the bounce and creating her own offense. Can Turner avoid the cramps? And the game clock right now is showing 34.2. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think we lost a little time there. I think that would change the strategy as well. Wouldn't it, though? It's, I think it's 3 minutes and 42 seconds. We're so taking use the videotape to review it for any timing miscue. You know, it's 3.41. I and mean, she uses the timeout, and, and obviously no, yeah, well, no time because she was inbounding the ball. So this will be pretty easy. 11 on the shot clock and 3:41 on the game clock. Somehow there's one second extra on the game clock. Inbounding to Crockett, Montgomery. Shot clock at six. She fires, and Curry with a rebound for Duke. Connecticut and a man-to-man -man down the stretch here. Harding tried to get it to Bales, but got so close to her, it was a very difficult pass to handle. Yeah, Harding has not been herself for much of the night. Almost lost by Thomas. And Curry hacked hard at that ball. Fortunately, she didn't pick up a foul. Now Turner with the shot clock winding down at the front last fight. Look at the finger right on top of her. She drilled the three. She was so confident on Sunday night, confident at the shoot around today, and just drains a huge shot. Barbara Turner, who averaged only 12 and a half points a game all year, has come along to be a superstar in the NCAA tournament. Harding off balance, got it. Tough shot and great patience. Got herself into the lane. She can get inside there anytime she wants. Her handle is that good. Look, I'd make sure that Barbara Turner touched it every time down. Absolutely. Dangerous pass there by Montgomery. Crockett at the high post. Shot clock at 10. Wide open as Montgomery rimmed out. Fight for the rebound. Out of bounds. Mel Thomas got the ball at the baseline, but stepped on it. And the possession goes without Barbara Turner really getting an opportunity to look at the rim. Two minutes left for the right to go to the final four, and it's a one-point game. 
Wainer guarded by Strother. Montgomery is on Lindsey Harding. And we've got a timeout by Duke with 12 on the shot clock, 144 on the game clock. Time now to spotlight women's championship moment number three, brought to you by Singular. Were they the best team ever? The Sooners would probably say yes. In the 2002 final, Oklahoma faced the Huskies, who did what they had done all season, dominate, claiming another title and an exalted place in history. 39-0, Connecticut is perfect. I think they could have gone 70-0. You could have just kept playing and nobody was going to beat them. Such a confident, dangerous, balanced basketball team was that championship. The hands of the master, Sue Bird. When the ball was in her hands, you felt pretty good about your chances. One forty-four left. One point lead. Remember, only a 12 on the shot clock. You knew this was going through Curry. Little screen and roll. She goes opposite. Dumps it down. Bales foul. That is a good play designed from the sideline. Really good call by Gail Gaskakoros. Your best offensive player. You set her in a pick and roll. She elected to go opposite. But on the weak side, you had a very big target in 6-7 Allison Bales. So three really good options off that one set. Bales has hit both free throws tonight and has 10 points. She has been huge in this game. She is as intimidating a defender as there is in this game. We're tied at 53. The fifth time this game has been deadlocked. Now, the inexcusable if they don't let Barbara Turner, as well as she's played, touch this basketball. Being guarded right now by Misty Williams. In the middle of that zone, Bales hanging out in the lane. Turner gets it only by accident, then kicks it back outside to Thomas. Strother, three on the shot clock, totally out of control, and lost the ball. Two straight possessions. Nobody's looking for the player they need to look for. Yeah, and this is too often what has pitched Connecticut, a failure to execute at key times. Under a minute left. Curry around the screen, Bales open. Back out to Harding. Ten on the shot clock for Duke. Both teams having trouble getting a look. Harding into the lane to Bales, got it. Just great patience by Lindsay Harding. Again, she can get through there anytime she wants. They're going to use a timeout. Why is it so? They are disorganized offensively. Well, Lindsay Harding off the bounce is able to get into the lane. She has been able to get by defenders almost at will. And certainly, Thomas is not going to be able to. Strother or Crockett comes over and just good patience. She gets along the baseline. You think maybe she's in trouble, but she gets her shoulders turned, doesn't panic. She's deep on the baseline. And what does your big person do, Mike? She made herself an yep. option. Nice step to the ball by Allison Bales. Last night, Connecticut needed a shot from their senior star in a clutch moment, and they got it. Turner, down to 10 seconds. Turner wants the ball. She's got it with five seconds to go under a lot of pressure. has won 29 games in a row in the state of Connecticut because of plays like that. But if they have one more possession and don't even look for Barbara Turner, you don't think they're going to make 30 in a row, do you? No, I do not. And both teams with two timeouts. You see the foul situation. You absolutely have to go through her. But here, this has happened to Connecticut on a number of plays. That last play we showed you, 
was a broken, busted play from the beginning. It's about the fourth time this season where they've needed to execute down the stretch and have been unable to do it. There is what's at stake, 29 straight. You've got to get her a touch. Get her a look. If I'm Barbara Turner, I demand it right now. Two-point game. Montgomery trying to penetrate. Turner, top of the circle, gives it right up to Thomas. Thomas goes in among the bigger players and hits a huge shot. 20 seconds left in the game. Duke can play for the last shot. And they want a timeout with 14-7. So once again, three trips in a row. Barbara Turner touches it twice, but almost like with a touch pass. And they finally got the bucket. Yeah, they had wanted to send Montgomery off the dribble drive and kick it to a shooter. She wisely gets into the lane, takes a little bit of a bump, and still able to connect. This is a tough shot, folks. And I'll tell you this, if you're Gail Guest, of course, the last play you ran off a sideline out of bounds was what you did. You got Monique Curry put into a pick-and-roll situation. You had Allison Bales on the weak side of the floor. That's three really good options. Monique off the pick and roll can make a good decision. And let's see if they go to Allison Bales. Now the thing is, Mike, obviously you want two looks at a win. So you take a shot and, and give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. But not enough time for Connecticut to come back and get a shot. Well, both teams have had a terrible time trying to get that kind of quick shot. Mm. In the last several minutes, it has been a struggle to get a shot within 15 seconds. Obviously, they'll have to do that in this possession. In terms of the score, you would have thought Connecticut had the advantage. They did not think they could get to 80 or 85 points and, and outscore Duke, so they've done a stellar job defensively. Both teams have. Well, Duke is the highest scoring team in the nation. Right now, they are 32 points below their season average. And this is the UConn benefit, this tempo. Abby Wayner will inbound. She would always be the bailout shooter at the top of that defense. Harding, game clock down to seven. Here's Wayner against the double team. That should be a jump ball. This should be a hell ball, but instead they're going to give a timeout to Duke. Duke gets a timeout with three seconds left. It looked like twice they had tied it up. Well, Connecticut showed 1-2-2 two, two zone, and they put in Nicole Wolf. And what they did was on the first pass, they want to come with a trap, and the timing is absolutely perfect. Shake them up a bit, and look at that. A <laughs> couple hands on the ball. Really good defensive call from the sideline. How about that for Nicole Wolf? A player with such promise who has been so limited by injuries. The first moment she gets to play in this ballgame, she can get in a critical situation and helps force almost a tie-out, but forces a timeout with three seconds left. Yeah, and you have three seconds, so you're going to inbound it. You have time for a dribble or two. You could get a solid screen somewhere. But obviously, you are working under duress here. Harding to inbound. Do you look for Curry? Do you look for Wayner? Bad pass. Curry from half court. We will go to overtime. She, Gino, is upset. What he thinks happened is Lindsay Harding committed a violation. It certainly looked like she broke the plane over there on the sideline. Gino Oriema was trying to be restrained by his staff. He didn't want a part of it. He wanted to go out and make the argument. He thinks, I believe, there was a, a violation on the inbound pass. That's exactly what he thinks. Now, neither player is allowed to break the plane. That's it. And there's a backcourt violation. Oh, Clearly, right. with 1.9. He clearly sees that she went back court. I think the only way you can test this is to say she didn't have possession until she'd already crossed, but it sure looked like it. Wait at least another five minutes because we are going to go to overtime to find the last participant. So far, North Carolina, Maryland, and LSU have already had their tickets punched for Boston next weekend. 
Duke and UConn will go to overtime to fight it out for that fourth and final spot. Some finish, you have to credit the UConn defense. Oh, there's no question. They Both teams have really played very good defense. Duke has continued to dominate on the glass. And Nicole Wolf will start the overtime period for the Huskies, the seldom used now junior from Walpole, Massachusetts, who has always played exceptional defense, but hasn't given them anything at the other end. Misty Williams with a save, goes right into the press table, but still got the ball in play. This is Wayner. Now Wolf is on Curry, interesting matchup there. They tried the lob inside, Harding had it knocked away. Curry, two Connecticut defenders go down, and Williams is wide open. How about that? Looked like Curry did not have her balance when she made, made the pass. And because Wolf had fallen down, there was no pressure on the passer. Montgomery, pull up from 12, got it. That kid is so cool, so young. 14 for Renee Montgomery. This is like a home game, but interestingly, Montgomery has played her best basketball away from the state of Connecticut this season. Wainer with the taller Strother on her. Curry got a screen, down to Bale. Little strong in the shot, knocked away. Bale's got it back and she's fouled. Well, they continue the offensive board and get themselves extra possessions and extra shots. It's on Barbara Turner, number four on the senior star. The initial defense is good. Misty Williams keeps it alive. If you can't board it, get a hand on it. Bales three out of four tonight. Now make it four out of five, and that puts her right at her season's average. Allison Bales, 14 points. Four personal fouls on Barbara Turner. Two-point lead for Duke. These teams have not been far apart all night long. No, Barbara Turner's gait is very funny. She is not running well. You can see after effects of those cramps. And there is Montgomery trying a desperation scoop shot bailed out by the foul. Well, she, like her counterpart, has gotten into the lane quite often. Looks like some contact on the wrist by Monique Curry. That's three on Curry. And Montgomery, who's an 80% free throw shooter, will go to the line. This is her first trip tonight. Makes it a very pressure-packed situation. Nice soft touch on the first one. And look at the disparity. 12-point scoring difference and an 18-point opportunity difference. Missed the second. Bales just picked up her 13th rebound. What a tournament she has had. Curry was open momentarily. They missed her, and now here's Harding. Strother with a rebound. I think they're going to get Nicole Wolf. She was trying to check out Monique Curry to prevent another offensive board. You see Monique slices down the lane, and she's going to, simply going to spin as the shot goes up, tries to get position, and there is where Turner or Wolf is called for it. Curry goes back to the line. First player in ACC history with 2,000 points, 800 rebounds, 400 assists, and 200 steals. She has been a magnificently well-rounded player her entire career in Durham. And she came back for this reason, an opportunity to go to a Final Four and compete for that elusive national title. You saw her dad, Michael, and she hit both of these. The lead is three for the Blue Devils. 313 and counting in this regional championship game that Gino Oriama wants to talk to his club. 
timeout here in Bridgeport. Back after this. Connecticut 61 to 58. The last time these teams met, January 2004, Elena Beard had 20 points in the second half, but it was Jessica Foley's three-pointer at the buzzer that was the game-winning shot as Duke rallied from 20 points down, and they broke Connecticut's 69-game home winning streak. Duke trying to do the same thing tonight because Connecticut has won 29 games in a row in their home state. And Duke has a three-point lead with 3-10 three, to go in overtime, for 29 straight in the NCAA tournament in the state of Connecticut. And you wonder what Gino Oriam is designing. It's interesting watching Barbara Turner go up and down because I think the after effects of that cramp, though it might have dissipated a bit, she's, she's not getting her feet off the floor very well. She's, her gait is a little bit funny. There is somebody who would want the ball at the end of a ball game. Jen Rosati, who is now the head women's coach at Hartford. She was a UConn guard from 93 to 96, and boy, was she good. Won her first NCAA tournament game as a head coach this year. Yeah, she was a tough nut. When you think about the players that were on those teams, Rebecca Lobo, Carol Walters, Jamel Elliott, Pam Weber. That was a good group of basketball players. We're not, uh, Rosati and Sue Bird were about as hard-nosed a guard as you could ever find in this game. I think you see the same kinds of qualities in Montgomery. I think she's a tough, hard-nosed kid with some leadership ability. UConn down three. Turner calling from the ball. He's being guarded by Abby Wayne. We're now down to seven on the shot clock again. Curry all over Montgomery. Montgomery has to turn around, has it knocked around, knocked down by Bales. Here's Wainer back to Curry. Curry is mugged and fouled. All Great triggered. defense by Duke. Yeah, I was just going to say, all triggered by outstanding defense by Allison Bale. Shot clock was getting down inside of five as she stretched out that six, seven frame to get a touch. They're just not quick enough to get a shot off the dribble. They need screens or a backdoor cut, something that's going to get somebody open. Well, and the interesting thing is you can go underneath on most players for Connecticut if you're running a screen and roll situation. Outside of Strother and Mel Thomas, and, and Duke can play soft on those pick and roll situations. And here comes Barbara Turner out. You can see her legs are really bothering her right now. She just can't get any lift. Now what a tough situation to take a player who's going to be the one to bring you back and have to sit her down. Now it's from to five with 238. Who do you go to now? Well, I, obviously your thought is Ann Strother. Swanye back in the ball game that gives them two ball handling guards. Mel Thomas is a good shooter but somebody has to give her an opportunity to pull the trigger. And Gina Warham is saying, I need somebody to penetrate. We don't have the time to be doing this. It's a learning experience, isn't it, Doris? When you were a freshman playing point guard, I mean, skill will take you so far, but you have to have the experience to round that out. That is correct. There's no question. And he talked about the difficulties of trying to get to a Final Four and win a national championship with young guards. Sports Center coming up next. John Anderson, Steve Levy. George Mason now hitting curveballs instead of three-pointers. We'll take a look at baseball. Dirk against Detroit. And Favre to quit on Saturday? I hope not. He's one of the best things about football. And I hope Brett Favre comes back for another year. You've got to get into the set quickly. Crockett down the lane against Bales. Just had to toss it up there, and Bales stuffed it right in her face. Then Crockett hits the runner. Are you kidding? Wow, that is a tough shot. After just getting rejected, the mental toughness to go right back at her. Will Ned Crockett with the first double-digit scoring effort of the season. She has 14 tonight. 
Bad matchup. Oh, it's a bad matchup for Connecticut. Bales. A lot of contact, no whistle, loose ball. Curry came up with the ball. And they're going to call this a jump ball possession arrow. We'll give it to UConn. Wow, they had Mel Thomas guarding Monique Curry. She got by her, made a nice touch pass to Bales. They were unable to complete it. Well, I thought Connecticut was very fortunate there to get a tie-up instead of a foul. And they are trying to win this thing right now without Barbara Turner. Still a one-possession game. Well, if they don't get some more fluid in her, if they tie it up and go to a second overtime, she might not be able to play in that. Strother with four on the shot clock. How many times have they gone down to almost nothing on that shot clock before they've been able to get anything off? Most of the shots have been rushed and not good, and Turner is going to try to come back in the ballgame, although she is shuffling her feet to the scorer's table as she does. And they're going to replace Helena Green. You would have liked to have had her on that possession, clearly, because of her ability to go off the bounce. Another big double-double for Turner. 1.18 to go. Still a one-possession game, but Duke has the ball. This has not been a textbook game, but boy, it's been close. Eight on the shot clock. Curry, way outside. Gets a double screen and launches. Boy, that was dead on target, but came up short. UConn's got to score on this possession. Crock at baseline. Block on Bale. That's four on the 6'7 junior. And exactly what you wanted if you were Connecticut. You get a chance to get to the free throw line. No time on the clock. Connecticut has got to push pace very quickly. That's a very good call. She did not get the angle defensively. And I'll tell you this, it's interesting, because all season long, Gail Gessenfors has not really run a lot of sets for Monique Curry. You know, they have tried to be as balanced offensively. They got away from what they used to do for Elena Beard. 75% right. of their sets were for her. She said, I want to be more balanced. They've done that. But down the stretch, they're getting Monique Curry the basketball. This is huge for Wilnette Crockett. She gets two shots. She is only a 63.9% free throw shooter. And misses the first. It is still a three-point lead. One out of two. So they extend pressure a bit. They're in a man-to-man, -man just extending. You wonder if they come with a trap. I'd go right. I'd go to Curry again because Turner's guarding her, and I don't know that Turner has the legs to do it. A basket by Duke would make it a two-possession game. Shot clock down to ten. Harding into the lane and a whistle. Timeout. Timeout. Duke. Boy, that's a tough time to call that, isn't it, with eight seconds to go on a possession clock? I don't think Gail liked how far away from the basket they were. Connecticut was switching every screen. If they didn't call it, Mel Thomas had switched a screen with Barbara Turner and had ended up on Curry. That would have been the matchup you wanted. As we pointed out earlier, both teams have struggled to get a shot off anywhere near in the first 20 seconds of the possession clock that was Duke's last time out Connecticut still has one to use should they need it obviously you need the stop and then I think you go right at the rim Mike I think you get a deuce by attacking the rim Duke obviously doesn't want to foul you should they not score and you've always got bails in there for the possible follow and certainly they have just killed Connecticut on the board tonight Eight seconds on the shot clock. 22.9 on the game clock. Harding. She's guarded by Montgomery. Three on the shot clock. Curry is going to have to launch. Ooh, that's such good. 
Well, they call a shot clock they violation. They call the shot clock violation, and Turner is down again. And it appears to be the cramps again. They're trying to stretch out that leg. This should not have been a violation, I didn't think, because it did touch rim. Dennis DeMeo gets it on the shot clock violation. Connecticut seemed to have possession anyway. They did, and she got it off. Yeah, that, that clearly touches rim. And all that does, it would have allowed Connecticut to bring it down against the defense that wasn't set, but they would have had to do it without Barbara Turner, mm. who was obviously in no shape to run right now, so they would have been playing four on five in the final possession. Barring their timeout. They've got one left, right? Yes, they have a timeout. I believe Charday Houston has checked into this basketball game for Barbara Turner. And how frustrating has it got to be for Turner? You have played the best basketball of your life in the NCAA tournament. And the cramps are just taking you out of the ball game. But she desperately needs, I'm not trying to play doctor here, but having some experience with cramps, she desperately needs some fluid to get rid of those. And obviously she is not going to be in on this last 12.7 seconds. I'm just thinking what happens if there's another five minutes. Mm. And she has obviously shown the effects of when she had the cramps before. She's not moving as well as we have seen her. Well, she is literally has been shuffling up and down the court. Exactly. Her feet are barely getting off the ground. But now you're worried about your offense. Clearly, Mike. You've got Sharday Houston checked in. On the catch, Sharday has got to be careful not to travel. We'd like to welcome all of you who have been watching ESPN2. You joined us at a pretty good time. Duke with a two-point lead. UConn with a ball. 12.7 seconds to go in overtime. The problem for UConn is not only the outstanding defense of Duke's Gale Geston Coors Club, but the fact that their best scorer, Barbara Turner, is suffering severe cramps for the second time in this game. Excuse me, second time in this game and is on the bench. Yeah. Now, clearly, because the shot clock violation has is, is been called, there was a dead... Now you can't push and get attack the rim before Bales gets set. So. And now they're going to check the game clock to see when they blew the whistle so they can reset this to the proper time. Obviously, got she got the shot off in time. There it hits the rim. And they're just going to have to find the time where they feel they blew the whistle. Right now, the uh, game clock has 12.7 seconds on it. it. Looks like they should put at least one second on there. Indeed, they have 13.4. But let me go back to the situation with Turner. Who do you go to for the last shot? Yeah, well, I think obviously, clearly, you'd like to get Ann Strother a touch. He's checked in Charday Houston, who has a lot of offensive moves. She clearly is a capable offensive player. She has not been sharp. She's shown a tendency to travel. And she has not scored in this ball game. Yeah. She's your best option offensively. Kalena Green is not an offensive player at this point in her career. You would think Strother, if it's the three, maybe Montgomery. Shot clock at six. Mel Thomas. Houston goes baseline, stumbles, puts up the shot, missed it. She had a shot. In fact, it was wide open from about six feet, and she missed it. And then a whistle. The officials will confer. Is the game over, or is there any time left? Gee, they're going to send Gail Gestacores back to the bench. Well, this was clearly what they had intended to run. They ran... Charday Houston to the right side of the floor. No contact as Curry hit the ground around the rim and out. 
you see Curry tries to body up, tries to sell it. Good no call there, I think. As she did not travel, kept that left pivot foot down, got a clean look at the rim. That has been Charday Houston's night. A six-foot shot to tie the ball game. As the defender goes down in front of her, nobody to bother her. But the pressure of trying to keep your school alive in the NCAA tournament may have been too much for the heralded sophomore. And that's it. The officials have ruled we have reached triple zero. And Duke will go to the final four. UConn loses for the first time in 30 tries on home soil. The careers of Barbara Turner and Ann Strother, Nicole Wolf, two-time national champions, have come to their completion. And Monique Carey will get another chance at that elusive national title. And they will always wonder in Connecticut what would have happened had Barbara Turner been able to play instead of having to be on the sideline with those cramps. But that's a question that will never have the answer to. What we do know is that Duke has earned a trip to the Final Four. You will have the three top teams from the ACC, a brutal conference this year, as they battled each, up, battled each other, and LSU, the wild card out of the SEC. First time in women's college basketball history. You had seen it on the men's side with St. John's. Georgetown and Villanova, and now the ACC Invitational at the Final Four. And three of the four number ones make it along with the number two, something that can't be said of the men's tournament this year. That's can for we? sure. Congratulations to Gail Gestencor. Fifth final eight game, and she had dropped her last two, breaks through away from home here in Bridgeport. Let's go to Holly. Monique, how much pressure was on this team to start this ball game? Um, I don't know if it was necessarily pressure, but we wanted to win this game so, so bad. And we knew we had to come out and play against an excellent Connecticut team. But I think we played well down the stretch and came out with the win. You seniors were struggling a little bit, you and Misty particularly. What were you thinking in the second half, and how did you overcome that? I just had to stay focused. But I have to give all the credit in the world to my teammates. They, they brought us through. They knew how bad we wanted it, and I think they won this game for us. You gave the sacrifice and stayed for your team for a fifth year. What's it like now to move on to the Final Four? I'm just overjoyed. I'm so glad that we made it. Now we have one more step we want to take, and we want to win a national championship. This was the first really close game you've been in in the NCAA tournament. What can you take away from this experience? I just think we stuck together in the end. We didn't fall apart. Um, UConn had huge runs in the second half, and we just fought back, and we fought back until we finally pulled it out in the end. All right, what are your th thoughts now on moving into Boston? Hey, we're going to take the championship back to Durham. All right, sounds good. Talk to right. you later, brother. Thank you very much. Guys. All right, thanks, Holly. Our Powerade player of the game, Allison Bales, nearly a triple-double. 15 points, 13 rebounds, 8 blocked shots. She was brilliant. A reminder for those of you watching ESPN, stay tuned for Sports Center. Those of you on ESPN2, a full update on the tournament with the Women's NCAA Championship Special. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, and your exclusive home for the Women's NCAA Championship. For Doris Burke, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, and good night, everyone.